Hey guys, happy Wednesday. Um, hope you're having a great week so far. You have caught me here almost pulling into work. So um, I just want to give a few minutes for people to jump on to this morning's Bible study. And um, I just hope you guys are having a peaceful week. I know there's a lot of chaos going on in the world, a lot of chaos going on right now in different areas of people's lives. We definitely want to pray for those uh, families and people in Lebanon with the explosion they just had. And I tell you, every time that um, our prayer groups get together, or we pray over situations, not just individual situations, but for our world and our country and things going on, that list just gets longer and longer. But I tell you, God is good and he takes care of his people. God loves his people. And I tell you, he really, it gives us a hope for what is to come and it gives us a hope for what God can do through any situation. So while we're waiting for um, a few more people to jump on this morning, I just wanted to thank our prayer team. So I uh, got home yesterday, was checking our mailbox and got some cards in from uh, Miss Cindy Morrison, Miss Vashta, uh, Miss Arlene, and some of the ladies on our prayer team. And I just wanted to thank you guys so much for that. I tell you, we talk about it. If you have prayer requests, let us know. Uh, message us, give us a call. But we have an amazing group of people, ladies, and really there's a lot of people in our church who participate. But there is a group there that um, really pray over you guys, pray over your situations. It's not just the ministers and pastors on the staff. Of course, they, they pray for you daily, but also our prayer team. And I tell you, they really have a heart for the people in ministry, for the people coming into the church, for the community, and really just to see lives changed um, and people change through the power of God. So it's just amazing. So if you do have a prayer request or something going on in your life, please, please let us know so that we can pray over that situation and um, over that circumstance and watch what God does in it and watch what is a hard situation or maybe you may be faced with a hard situation and watch God turn it for his glory and watch a testimony come out of it because it's so, so awesome to watch what God does in the lives of his people and in the lives of people in general. I tell you, it's just amazing because I've seen God in my life so many times personally just come through and do absolute miracles. I tell you, I don't know. I think Cricket may have said this um, Sunday, but I can't imagine and I don't know how anyone walks through this life without God, walks through this life and all of the things and all of the trials that we face without God there and without the hope and the promises that his word gives us for our life because we do live in a dark time. But God is that hope that we have. And so I'm going to go ahead and get into, since we're talking about that, I'm going to go ahead and get into today's message. Um, get pulled in right up here and get started with it. Because I tell you, it's, it's a simple message, but it's a very important message. Because we live in a time of chaos and turmoil and being pulled in so many different directions and so many different things going on. I want to read this because it is just really struck me this morning. Let me get this out really quick. Um, and it's going, I'm going to read this morning out of 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 11, 3. And it says, but I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve with his craftiness, your minds will be led astray from the simplicity and the purity of devotion to Christ. And I tell you, God's message to us is so simple. And sometimes I think we think in the world that we live in that everything has to be complicated or difficult or there's some kind of secret to how God is or who God is. But there is no secret to who God is. The Bible tells us that God is love. The Bible outlines for us and tells us who God is, what his heart is. We read about the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, long-suffering, and the list goes on. And we look at what God does in, the li in our lives, and we just see His goodness all around us. The Bible also tells us who the enemy is and what he has come to do, and that's to steal, kill, and destroy. And so as we dive into the Word, and as we get into the Word, we see that God very well, Jesus very well outlines who God is, who He is, and who the enemy is. And how we can identify those things. So I want to read that scripture to you one more time this morning. 2 Corinthians 11.3 for those of you who are jumping on. 
Um, it says, but I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, your minds will be led astray from the simplicity and the purity of the devotion to Christ. So the enemy wants to, and in that scripture, you know, it talks about Eve there, and it talks about the deception, and, you know, Eve stated what God said, don't eat from the tree, and, and the enemy questioned that, and asked her, and came back at her with a question, and I think the enemy does that to us still on a daily basis. He puts questions in our mind. He puts accusations against God, questioning God, questioning what we know to be true in God, and the enemy really tries to discourage us, to get us defeated to make things seem more complicated than what God's message really is. And he works best when he can. The enemy works best in darkness. He works best in deception. He works best in hate, in lies, and in all of those things. And we're seeing that all around us in our world right now. The enemy attacking through those different avenues. But I tell you, that is nothing to be discouraged about because we serve a good God. And that's nothing that's, nothing that's new. The enemy has used those tactics since the beginning to lie, to deceive, to destroy. And we, the people of God, have to stand up against that and have to speak the truth of God and speak the truth in love, but also speak the truth, what God says. And we need to be able to look at a situation and say, okay, this is what God says, but let me also tell you why God loves you. And let me tell you what God's promise is about this situation. And let me tell you why God says and what God's word says about you making it through this situation. So for all of you guys out there who feel just bogged down, maybe you're battling depression, maybe you're battling fear, maybe you're battling doubt in a certain situation, I just want to encourage you that God is, God sees you, God knows your situation, and God is there, and God is waiting, and God wants you to reach out to Him. God wants you to cry out and ask for His intervention in your situation, for God's will to come about in your life, because God's good and perfect will is what is going to get you through that situation, and if you're dealing with those situations, if you're dealing with a heavy heaviness this morning, God has an answer for you, and I want to read you another scripture this morning. I want to read you, I'm going to read it in, um, I had my phone out here, and the version that I have here is actually out of the Message Bible, but for you guys who can pull up the app on your phone, um, you can pull that up or go to your Bible and read it, but I want to read it to you here this morning. It's Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 through 30, and again, grab your Bibles this morning wherever you are, um, the Bible app on your phone, because this version is out of the Message Bible that I have here. But I want to read it to you. It says, Are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. And I'll show you how to take real rest. Walk with me. Watch how I, how, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Amen. Amen. And I wanted to read that this morning. And um, the the book that I read out of here has different versions. But I think that as we are here on social media and as we're using Facebook, Facebook and other avenues um, to reach out to people, I, I tend to read different versions. A lot of what I'll read on here is uh, New King James, King James. Sometimes it's NIV. But this morning, I thought this was really interesting because the Message Bible, that message really... And, and as I said, where you're sitting this morning, grab your vi Bible, grab um, your version on your Bible app. But I wanted to read that out of the message this morning because I tell you, that is an awesome message to God's people. And no matter what version you read that in, I tell you what, it talks about God and who He is and how the only place that you are really and truly going to find rest in the world we live in today is in Him and in His promises and in who He is. So let's read that again together. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. Are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and recover your life. I'll show you how to take real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and learn to live freely and lightly. I tell you, Jesus' message there is just, it's, it's a message for a time 
that we live in today. And this word never changes and the promises never change and God never changes. And he's saying here, seek refuge, seek rest in me. For those of you this morning who need rest, who need refuge, remember what that the scripture in 2 Corinthians said this morning and remember this scripture in Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Seek refuge in him. If you are worn out, if you are exhausted, if you are tired, if you are stressed, if you are praying, if you have exhausted everything in your life that you can think of to do in your current situation, then what you have to do now is, like the Bible tells us, be still and know that I'm God. Take a few minutes. Take some time in your week and just get quiet, get along with God. Take that time with him. Take that uninterrupted, however, whatever length of time it is, set it aside and turn it over to him. Do it for your situation. Do it for yourself. Do it because God cares. Do it because you've tried everything else in your life to get peace and you cannot find peace. And sometimes we try everything else before we, we get to that solution that we wish we would have started with in the beginning. And I will tell you, God is that solution and God is that answer. And the Bible promises, promises us true rest and peace in Him. So if you need rest and peace in the chaos that you're living in today, seek God. I just want to challenge you today. Take five minutes, 10 minutes, one hour, whatever it may be. It may be now, right now in this moment, as soon as this is over. It may be this evening as you're at home, whenever that is for you. I just want you to take that time, stop what you're doing, take your situation, take the burdens of the day. Maybe thank, take your gratefulness and thankfulness and, and tell God how grateful you are and thankful you are for what he's done in your life and then turn over and cast your cares on him because he cares for you cast your cares on him maybe you need to take that time and just sit get alone with him get quiet with him because remember what that scripture said remember those scriptures we read this morning and so before we end our Bible study I want to reread those two scriptures to you in case you just jumped on here um, this morning. So the first one we went over because we because we talked about the simplicity of the Word of God and the simplicity and how the enemy tries to lie, lie to us, steal, kill, destroy, overcomplicate what God is really saying, confuse his message. So I want to read that scripture to you. 2 Corinthians 11 3. But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, your minds will lead you astray from the simplicity and the purity of the devotion to God. So remember that. Remember God's word. Seek God's word and seek knowledge through his word. And then uh, Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Um, this, this version I'm reading out of here is Message Bible. But again, find your version. Um, in your Bible this morning, grab it, pick it up, but it says, are you tired? Are you worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take real rest. Walk with me, work with me, watch what I do. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. So there is freedom in God. There is freedom from the anxiety that you're dealing with, and there's freedom from those things that are weighing you down and the enemy is trying to use to destroy your life. So I just want to encourage you guys today, take that time today on this Wednesday, um, and just get along with God. Take a few minutes and cast your cares on Him and really watch what He does in your life. So I hope you guys have a blessed week, and I will see you guys tonight. Um, right here at Victory El Dorado for our 6.30 service.